Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification course on documentation and resources. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the exam requirements from our Essentials Exam 220-701, Section 2.2, where we need to explain and interpret common hardware and operating system symptoms and their causes specifically relating to using documentation and resources. We're going to go through understanding user and installation manuals, what you can find on the internet, what you should expect to see out on the web, and training materials, which can be an excellent source of information, especially when you're trying to troubleshoot a problem. If you have acquired, you've purchased some new equipment lately, you've installed it into your network, a new server, a new piece of networking equipment, a router, a switch, whatever it is, one thing you may notice is there's no books. There's no physical paper that seems to be printed anymore. This is a good thing and a bad thing, of course. It's good because we're not killing trees and there's nothing that we stick up on the shelf and takes up room. The problem, of course, is that having everything electronic makes it very difficult to read things offline. If you're having problems with a server or piece of equipment, it's much easier to find things in a book. You can flip to the page very quickly, whereas if it's online, it's a little bit more complex. It's a trade-off, of course, easier to search online, less difficult to read online, however, if you want to take that on a plane or somewhere else where you don't have a computer. So you have to keep that in mind, that you may not have the physical book to go with this piece of equipment. There are downloadable versions usually you can get. Some come with the equipment. Sometimes you may have to go to the manufacturer's website to download that. PDF versions are great. They're very searchable, something that uh, can really show you exactly the way it was supposed to look in the manual with diagrams and pictures, and you can zoom in and out and search for things. Also, HTML versions. If you just need a browser, you pop up, open your browser, you're able to read through the document that way. Uh, take advantage of these. Even if you have the physical books, you may also want to have a digital version as well. It makes it very, very easy to search for very specific information. So if that's available to you, certainly take advantage of it. If you want to be able to grab specifications, to look at technical details of pieces of equipment, if you're trying to perform a particular function, how do I install a hard drive into this new server? What types of hard drive interfaces does it expect? What kind of memory do I need to install into this device? Usually that is included with the installation manuals, with the detailed manuals that come with the, the technology. You can't always rely on getting that from other sources, even third-party sources that say, oh, sure, this memory will work. You can buy that from us. You always want to go back to the manuals and confirm what you are reading in there matches what you're about to buy and put into this equipment because nobody knows better than the manufacturer of that hardware what types of specifications it really does have. Another thing I found is that sometimes third-party books can give you a lot more insight into features and functions. Third-party books are great for doing how-tos with particular pieces of equipment or particular pieces of software. They're not great for the technical specifications. I still want to rely on the manufacturer for that. But for how to do certain things, the manufacturer doesn't focus a lot in their manuals on how-to functionality. So that's exactly where you should go when you want to do third-party books. Look through those and and see how to perform particular functions, how to do a detailed installation of that hard drive. Usually third-party books will go into the pieces where the manuals don't have a lot of detail, giving you that well-rounded view of what you need to know to be able to accomplish that task. We're a bit spoiled with the internet these days. Almost everything is out there, and certainly that one Google search engine tends to be the one place to go whenever you need a, a jumping off point to find whatever you're looking for. However, you can run into problems with that as well. If you're searching for memory installation, you may not get the very specific pages that you're looking for. Sometimes those very, very broad terms don't really allow you to focus your efforts and narrow down on the, those pieces. In fact, you may want to go out to Google and learn more about some of the options you have to be able to do a search. For instance, if you type in a search parameter for memory and then you put a site colon and then the name of the manufacturer's website. If you put site colon dell.com, it will only look for the word memory 
on the Dell.com website. There's these little sneaky little tricks you can do with Google that may really help you find the detailed information of exactly what you're looking for. Make sure you know your search engine and can use it very well. The manufacturer's website is almost always going to have what you're looking for from a very specific manufacturer detailed specification, hardware and software level. The quality between different websites varies greatly. However, if you've been out to websites like Dell.com, you know it's extremely comprehensive. Other hardware manufacturers may not have that level of comprehension. You may not be able to find every single manual. There may not be images available. It may even be difficult to get basic specifications from some websites. So keep that in mind. Not all websites are created equally. There are some sites like Dell that has very, very detailed technical manuals. They'll explain to you exactly how to open a computer what you should take out if you want to take apart your laptop. There is a step-by-step -step diagram based view of exactly what you should be doing. You don't always get that on other websites, but if it's available, you should absolutely take advantage of it. Third party sites are also good places to go if there are fan sites or sites where there is someone who wants to follow the Dell products and can tell you a little bit more than what you're going to get on the Dell site. That's great. Sometimes user forums are really good for that, where a lot of different people are getting together who own that particular piece of hardware or software, and they can leave messages and communicate back and forth with each other in, an, in a mode that is, is one where you can leave a message and just come back tomorrow and find out if anybody answered that. Of course, you can also search for other things that people have talked about in the past, a great resource. And you should always take advantage of those user forms and message boards if they are available. If you've ever been to a technical training class, then you know there are fantastic manuals and technical documentation you can get from that. After all, the class is there to teach you how to do something. So usually, the manuals will take you step by step through the process. And if there are labs that are done, some hands-on activities in those training classes, those lab materials can be very, very useful to go over later so that you can apply what you've learned in the class, apply it to exactly what you're trying to do in your environment. Some hands-on labs are fantastic. Some are not. Sometimes that's really what determines whether or not an off-site or extended training class is really all of that useful. There's online videos. I'm pretty partial to those as training resources where you can do how-to demonstrations, watch somebody perform that function on the screen, and be able to follow along with them. It's also great for research. Before you purchase a product, before you do something like acquire a piece of software, maybe you'd like to see exactly how that software works. And online training videos could be a great demonstration of that and help you make the decision of, that's exactly the software I'd like. He's performing exactly the function I would like to do. Let's go ahead and acquire that software so we can perform that function as well. Sometimes you can purchase training materials separately. You can not necessarily sign up for the class, but there may be a cost to get the training manual. Now, training manuals usually are, are not inexpensive. These are not $50 manuals. In some cases, these are hundreds of dollars of manuals. A lot of time and energy is usually put into training manuals, and they don't come cheaply. But if you can acquire that and not have to pay for the travel and the time out of the office, that may be an advantage to you. So make sure you take advantage of that. Sometimes you can acquire training manuals on a third party basis. You may want to take advantage of eBay, take advantage of online resources, see if somebody's selling the manuals that they used in their training class, and then you can get it for pennies on the dollar and be able to take use of those resources whenever you'd like. Let's see what you can remember about documentation and resources. Our first question is, where's the best place to go to find downloadable technical manuals? Well, if you're savvy on the internet, then you know the manufacturer's website is going to have detailed information for you. Next question is, what's a good alternative for a manufacturer's manual? You don't have a manual from the manufacturer. Maybe you can go to a third party book or a training material to get the information that you're looking for. And our last question, is it possible to get training materials without actually attending the class? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But if from a third party is a great place to go. eBay is a fantastic place to go for those manuals. Occasionally, you can find someone who's selling them there. Well, that covers what we needed to know with our documentation and resources module. We've now gone through user and installation manual resources, our internet and web-based resources, and training materials as well. If you'd like to watch any of our other free A-plus videos, participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.